Hey, and welcome back to my rug hook and talk show. Okay, so, oh, I'm a little cut off. Okay, let's try to fix that. So sorry. Bear with me. Let's see. Okay, a little better. Okay, so um, for those of you who are just tuning in, uh, my name is Annette, and I'm a rug hooker for over 20 years. And I do a little show so I can connect solo rug hookers out there. Uh, that's how I started, without anybody to, I was self-taught, so there was nobody around to kind of share any information with me, and um, back then the internet was kind of very, just kind of coming around, so uh, for me it was at least, because I'm probably more like 25 years rug hooking, so uh, this is what this is all about. So welcome, I'm glad you're with me. Grab something nice and warm to drink if you're in the New England area or over here on the East Coast. It's a little chilly up in the Northeast area, um, but just get something that's comfortable. Uh, get your hook. Uh, we do a little hooking, and I've got a lot of things to share with you today. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We get a little sip here. Mm. I've got some good cinnamon coffee decaf, but it's good. Okay, so. Um, I did share, most of you know I'm a, I'm a, a tea freak, I love my tea, um, usually that's what I'm drinking for the show, but every now and then I get an urge for coffee or something like that, so anyway, I uh, did find cinnamon apple spice, and that is really, really good, I'm enjoying that a lot, and if you take an orange slice, I know it sounds weird, but people do that in their um, hot punch, uh, you know, their warm cider, uh, you could uh, change it up a little and it tastes really, really good with that little orange slice in there. So just a little something. It's by Celestial Seasonings. And for those of you who, who can't get it, I'm sorry, but this is, um, it's in the United States, so I'm not sure how far and where around they sell, but there you go. Celestial Seasonings. Okay. So this was the book I wanted to share the other day. I was sharing about the book uh, and I was trying to get in touch with the person, but um, they're out in Washington, and by the time I do that, you know, this book's gonna have to get returned. So anyway, I just thought I'd share. I think it'd be fine to go ahead and show the front cover of this book. The Hooked Rugs of Theodore Sizer by Wa Molly Warner and Hilda Sizer Warner. These are relations, r relatives to them. And so there's the book. And so Theodore was, um, a man, a professor at Yale, and uh, he was, his family lived in the Connecticut area, I believe in Bethany and around there. Um, just quickly, the, the, the rugs are, I'm going to say, 98% of them are all in color. There's like just one or two that are not. But um, he did a lot of uh, rugs for other people. And he did rugs for, uh, you know, colleagues. He did rugs for his granddaughters. And uh, so the, they wanted to catalog, kind of make a little historical record of his books for his family members, and they self-published this book. And this is available online. Um, and I just wanted to share that there are a lot of male hookers, rug hookers out there that do a great job and share. We kind of focus mostly on um, the female, and maybe because there's a lot of them, but I beg to differ. I think there were a lot of male rug hookers out there that we just don't really kind of notice or they stay in the background so come on out and show us what you're doing so this is a great great um addition to the rug hooking world this believe it or not was available through my library and you know whether it was just that it was put in the connecticut library um because they were from connecticut but um search it out in your library it might be available otherwise you know it is available for for sale um for like forty dollars or something from uh, if you go Google it it will come up that we'll if you put in the hooked rugs of Theodore Sizer it will come up okay so there we go and for those still looking for some good history uh, on hook rugs I was able to get out the hookers art evolving designs and hooked rugs by Jesse Turbane and uh, many of you have heard of her she's uh, a big name in rug hooking book publishing and that sort of thing. She's uh, very into her rugs and she loves to collect and she's uh, a great person to have put all these books together 
and share with us. So she does a, a little bit of history in the beginning and lots of great pictures. And um, that is a great book. Again, I, I try not to show too much on the inside for copyright reasons. I, I don't know where that line is drawn or not, but you will enjoy this book. So I'll just go over there and hold it up. I'm going to try to put a lot of these books on the, uh, the blog. So um, for those of you who are subscribed to the blog, you'll automatically get that info. And um, there you go. So try to look that up. My blog is um, www.http Let's Hook. I believe it's at WordPress, or I think it's dot WordPress. Dot com. So um, put it in. It, it's something Google. If you Google it, it should come up. If not. Um, drop me a comment and I'll try to get a link to uh, the blog and uh, on the videos too. Okay, so here's my big uh, surprise. Um, this is not a rug hooking book at all, but if you know me, I, I, on my blog I love everything about fiber and fabric and yarn and wool and everything that has to do. I love quilts. I don't quilt, but I love them and I love to look at them and I love the color theories and the planning and the not planning which turns out these wonderful surprise quilts and that's what this is all about this is the book unconventional and unexpected it's american quilts below the radar 1950 to 2000 by roderick kira kofi and i apologize roderick if i just mispronunciated your name so just bear with me i'm new to that name and your work, so I'm very excited to share this today. And Roderick uh, gave me permission to go ahead and share, so I'm going to do that right now. Um, this book is beautiful, and it has lots of essays and um, and stories uh, behind Roderick and the history he shares with us um, on his quilt collecting journey. And um, you know, is rug hooking like quilting? Not at all. Uh, you need a sewing machine for some of the quilts. You know, some people do everything by hand. I don't know if that's done anymore, but way back when, uh, it was done by hand. And the quilting was done by hand, not by machine. So things have changed up. But my point is, is rug hooking is, is a much different craft, but they both involve fabric. Uh, obviously, rug hooking is, is wool, and uh, quilting is is just about anything you want to throw into quilting. And rug hooking is getting the same way. Uh, the purpose, each have evolved into an art form, which is interesting. So uh, we have options. We can make a rug for practical, functional use, just as you could a quilt. And I kind of like that. And then I like the idea also of being able to make a very small hooked rug or mat or hooked art for the wall. And, and people are doing that with their quilts too. They can kind of concentrate more on the design aspect and, and something with impact uh, to make it more artful for the walls or for a, a tabletop or something like that. So uh, the rugs in here are very imperfect. There's nothing that you're going to see that looks um, outstanding in the fact that they are all outstanding. I love this style of quilt. I like these a little better than the ones that are very tedious and matched and that sort of thing. So I'm just going to go through some of these beautiful quilts. If you could see, there we go. And you could see what I'm talking about. It's very mismatched. It's kind of make-do. And there is a wonderful uh, chapter in here. It's called The Beauty of Making Do by Denise Schmidt. And it's a small essay. I won't read it. You know, I, I'm going to hope that you're going to go out and either get this book or take it out of your library. I don't want to give away, but that is a really, this sums up kind of what I've been speaking of with rug hooking. And this is the beauty of making do. It's, it's the beauty of not having too many choices and just hooking or quilting with what you have or making a design out of two different colors because that's all you are able to, to find or have. And, um, the patchwork quilts are probably my favorite because of that and using whatever you have and 
and using it to, to make some beautiful quilt or rug. Again, there's just so many beautiful, beautiful quilts in here with some really nice stories. Here's an interesting quilt, and it's kind of the back side of the fabric, if you can see that, stitched in quarters, little triangles, turned on its side, and that is just an interesting, interesting design. Okay, and so uh, Roderick has done many books. Uh, I have not stumbled upon him and uh, until recently. And so I went to his website and he has a beautiful website. So here we go. This is what I'm talking about. Just making something beautiful out of what we just find to be discarded, maybe rags or you were going to dump them in, you know, the rag bin so we can wash the car with them or dry the car with them or use them for, you know, cleaning the bicycles off. But just taking the time and piecing together these beautiful little pieces of fabric and salvaging out of them what you could and putting them together is awesome. Um, there is one, let's see if I could find it quickly. I don't want to spend too much time wasting your time. There's a really beautiful quilt. Um, let's see if I could find it quickly. But they're more like, you know, they're almost like the, the G's Bend quilts that uh, they're just made with whatever is around, whatever scrap uh, fabric and, and cut up into little pieces and put together. And they just make these such beautiful, impressionable quilts. Here's one that's very pretty. I can't find the denim one now, but maybe it's another surprise for you. I mean, what a pretty use of colors. And you could see it's a very imperfect uh, not super planned out quilt, um, but transfer that to rug hooking and we can come up with the same impact by uh, using what you have and sometimes only using what you have produces an amazing effect and I just wanted to share that with you and his book and I thank you Roderick for giving me the permission to share with my viewers. This is a great book. I'm still reading it. I'll probably have it for another month and I will be reading away on that. So thank you very much. I'll try to load all those on the blog, and uh, there you go. We have a little something uh, different to look forward to, and uh, yeah, because it's a great time for reading. Uh, up north here, it's very cold. It's been zero to 16, so there's not much going out, and you know, outdoor time at all, it's cold. You want to avoid the outdoor as much as possible. You run into the car, and you go where you're going and you come home. So it's a good time for us rug hookers and quilters to embrace that downtime in our house. And uh, it's a beautiful thing. There you go. So just wanted to share those books with you. And like I said, from time to time, I'll be sharing some more and loading them on the, the blog uh, website over there and see, uh, you can go and visit that and get the information from there. So that being said, I'm going to try to show, let's see if I could give you a little idea, kind of hard on this little piece to show you, but here, you know what, maybe I'll just pick up the camera a little bit and move it over here. Let me see what we could see. Okay. There we go. Okay. So it's, it's coming along. It's a small little piece. Let me see if I can get to the edge so you could see. It's only that big. Okay. And as you can get closer, I just want to share the colors that are in there. Oh, we got a little scrap. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't mean for anybody to get dizzy on that. Ugh. That's a horrible thing to move that camera around and you're looking at it. I know I get a little weird and queasy. Okay. So basically, um, yeah, I did one in solid. I was going to do a second one in solid, but I decided against it. I just want the one leaf solid. And I'm just uh, filling in now. And let me see if I can get over here and you could see a little better what I'm working on. Okay, so here we go. Here's... Um, a little empty leaf that I'm going to be working on and filling in and uh, I'm enjoying this quite a bit I must say this uh, backing is uh, 
the primitive linen is what it's called. It's got a, a, a weave that is very open, not super loose. As you hook, you know, it tightens up. But it's, as you can see, I'm putting in my hook and out it's coming. Beautiful. I mean, this is the way you, you should strive to hook. It shouldn't even be uh, an effort. It should just be popping the hook in and pulling it out. Popping it in, pulling it out, and painting with your wool, so to speak. Just depositing that little bit of color uh, where you need it. As I get up to these leaves, the, the edges of them, I'm torn, do I pull them up uh, or do I cross under? And for some of them, I'm just crossing under. I'm, I'm not really too concerned about it. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a big deal. It's one little spot on there. You know, if you don't know what I'm talking about, when you get to the edge of a design, you're not supposed to cross over loops. Uh, it, it could lead to bumps in the rug. It could make the rug actually wear out a little faster on those little bumps because it's a little bit more uh, connection. It just stick, stands out more onto the bottom so it rubs a little bit more and it could wear out quicker. So the, the, the logic and the theory is not to do that so it doesn't, you don't get those worn out spots. Um, this is a very, very small little uh, area and I'm not too concerned and because every single one of them are like that I've had to make a choice so on some of them I have crossed over and some of them I haven't so it's a personal choice I'm not too concerned because this is not going on the floor um, that's my point so you have to kind of struggle with that because some people are steadfast it's not going to happen I'm not crossing whether it's on the floor or or not and um, yeah, that's something you've got to just do and live with it and be okay with it. But this is going to uh, not be for a floor. It's very small. It's just a piece I'm working on. And uh, yeah, it's a fun piece. Like I said, it's not thought out. It's just I'm kind of doing it as I feel what I want to do, uh, which direction I even want to hook the strips in. A few of them I put some guidelines. Um, that part's planned out. Um, and believe it or not, I've changed those. The direction was going this way, and now the direction's going the same direction, but in a in different curve. So I've, I've changed things up, and that happens as you're hooking along, you change things up. And um, only because sometimes when you visualize something in your mind, and even if you put it on paper, you know, sometimes when it comes to the actual hooking of it, you don't like it. And so you know what? You change it. It's there is no law. Just change it up. It's not a big deal. If you don't like something, pull it out and uh, put something else there, um, or don't put anything there. If, if you know if you were going to change the color and you don't want to change it, go back to the original color. So it's all what you feel like is happening um, on the rug. And sometimes as you're hooking. You'll even say to yourself, because there's no background in there, that, wow, this is just not coming out the way I thought. But the bottom line is, the background is what gives the whole, whole design its, its real life. Um, if, in fact, it's a rug, that's not a pictorial. A pictorial is a pictorial. There's not much you could do to a pictorial. That is the whole design. But a rug, that's like a floral, a geometric, abstract something of that nature. 90% uh, of the time, the, the, the background is what gives it its life and its, its beauty and brings out the colors in it. So just uh, play with it and see what works and what colors you like. And uh, I'm really enjoying working on this because for the first time, it's not a rug that I planned every color. And, you know, it's just flowing. It's just a, a rug that I felt like working on. Whatever I feel like doing, I'm doing. And that's why I ultimately called it the felt rug because it's just a rug of fun and um, that's basically where we we're at with this so I just I hope you're enjoying your rugs and working on them and um, as you complete them please upload them to rughookingdaily.ning the, the website that we're uh, we have a little group for those of us who are watching the show and uh, joining in 
uh, that are solo and don't have a group, we've formed a little group on rughookingdaily.ning. So if you want, go ahead and join up, become a member, and there's nothing to it. There's no membership. They're not going to ask you the name of, you know, your cats and your dogs and your firstborn. It's just very simple. And, uh, yeah, and it, it's a great little way for you to bounce ideas off of everybody or if you're struggling with the situation. There are lots of times people are just new to rug hooking, as we all once were, and those who are self-taught were even had a harder time, uh, like myself, learning about different things because there was nobody there to say not to do that or don't try this. And so we, I've tried it, and many other solo hookers, I'm sure, out there have. But um, So we're here to help each other and learn what are the better things to use for rug cooking, what's, what's not good, and you know what? In the end, it's all good. Try it and see what works and you will find that you have a personal preference just like everybody does and it's so it's what works for you and that's it there are many options out there for rug hooking be it uh, financially for whether you're using an expensive backing and inexpensive backing I started all my rugs on burlap as you know if you've watched the other shows and my rugs are still in perfect condition will they stand the test of time you know what they probably will I, I would even tend to think that the burlap that they're hooked on is probably even a little better than the burlap from years ago. So I'm going to say, yeah, my rugs will probably still be around as long as nobody steeps them into water. Um, and that's, you know, it's not a, a great big concern, but it, it is nice to know that all the work we put on our rugs uh, will be standing around maybe in 100 years for our generations to come in our family. That would be awesome. So it's a personal choice. Okay, so this rug is nearly completed. I mean, it's a very small rug, and I have just a little bit more rug cooking to go on it. So I'm going to look in my little box over here, which is running very thin on colors. So I'm going to have to absolutely start cutting some colors here. And let's see. That would be my furnace just cook, kicking on, so if you hear that. So, I'm going to speak a little louder. So if you want a little movement in your rugs, you know, if you're doing flowers, the bottom line is if you go around your flower, the movement will eventually take place because as you curve around your designs, the, the design will absolutely just start uh, providing that, that curved line for you anyway. But if you have a bigger background and you want more than just that design to pop up, oh, I gotta go. uh, you, you can just make a few, I call them little motion lines. You put throw a few curves in there and you hook them. And you have no choice now but to hook those and uh, hook around them and hook next to them and mimic them you will get that motion. And yes, you have to put in some deliberate motion lines. Well, that's how I do it. I put in some deliberate curves where I will start to then add in between and hook and hook and hook and mimic those lines and they will. you will start to see the motion. Uh, for those of you who saw the beginning of this, if you go back to the earlier shows, you'll see that there were circles drawn around the leaves uh, to give it a guide because it's not something you could do easily. Um, you tend to just start hooking and then before you know it that circle motion is gone and you don't have your little thing. So if you could see right here, let me see if I could bring it. I'm just going to bring it down to you again. Sorry for if any dizzy. Okay, so right over here we did some motion. Right in here, right in here, curved lines. Okay, there we go. So sorry, I know, Ooh, dizzy, dizzy, dizzy. Okay, so anyway, I just want to thank you all for joining me today. Uh, I love having you part of the group. Uh, if you're new, go ahead and join up to rugcookingdaily.ning. I'm sure you will be happy. You don't have to get involved if you're a nice, quiet, solo rug hooker and 
plan to stay that way, just become a fly on the wall and you can just kind of hear what's going on. And you know what, sometimes you pick up something and you learn without actually uh, asserting yourself, but that's fine. I'm kind of a, a quiet solo person myself. I don't, uh, I'm not big with the group, so this is a great way for us to connect and we don't even really have to come out of our comfort zone. How nice is that? So until we meet again, I just want to wish you happy hooking, stay well, and we'll see you soon. Take care.